Hey, I'm Maddie. Right now I live in a converted minivan and I'm on a quest to go to all 50 states to go on an outdoor adventure and drink a local beer. This is part two from my series in Montana. This is part two of my trip to Glacier, and today I'm exploring the area called St. Mary's. I decided to do, oh shoot, I think it's called Red Eagle Trail. As I was saying, I'm doing Beaver Pond Loop, and I chose that because it's just three miles. I'm not really feeling like doing anything huge today, so I think that is, that's the move. Everything we're hearing is probably a pika, which is right here. But here's a better picture from the internet. Because this trail is a loop, we're coming to the fork now, and I think I'm gonna go this way and go by the lake first. Just because I feel like seeing some good lake scenery right now. Oh man, this trail must be super overgrown. I hope I'm on the right path. Okay, we've reached a dead end here. Let's hope this isn't a dead end down here. I think it is another dead end. But while we're here, let's look at this water. It's so like aqua colored, not even blue, but like this beautiful greenish color. And look, it matches my backpack. If I remember right, according to the video I watched at the visitor center, the color is because of minerals that were left behind by the glaciers that formed this park and that are the namesake, you know, Glacier National Park, because it had a bunch of glaciers form it. Okay, now let's see if I can tell where I went wrong not obvious right away so I guess this wasn't where the trail splits for the loop I guess that's just a I don't know a, a side path if you want to go see the lake or something It turns out, I guess, that the way I saw was a dead end after all, and we have been going on the route by the lake.
just a black bear. I know because there's no hump and of the color, but oh my gosh, I saw a bear in real life. I'm definitely gonna keep moving. It could be dangerous if there's cubs around, but oh my goodness. Wow, that was so cool. I'm so grateful that wasn't a grizzly bear because that would definitely be really scary, but that was kind of a, um, I don't know, a brush with wildlife. I do have bear spray with me in case I saw a grizzly and you can't really tell because of the color. I misspoke at first. And when I was talking about the, it didn't have a hump, there is a neck hump on grizzly bears. Black bears back goes like that a little and grizzly bears, you know, have a big shoulder muscles. Um, how else I know is their face, faces are shaped a little different and a black bear has pointier ears where a grizzly bear has more close to their head ears. Well, I am one with nature now. Oh. And we're back. The trail ends with the 1913 Ranger Station. I think these two are black bears as well. just looking around and I think I might as well go to Bering Falls which looks like that. This is so fun and so misty. You can't you can't stand here and not get a little wet. That was a really fun destination, but I should have brought like water and a snack or ate food before I left because, you know, I was hiking five minutes in and I was like, oh, I'm not there right away. I must have overestimated what points and miles means. Okay, so lesson learned there. 0.7 miles is not a hop, skip, and a jump away. Actually, you need to take water and like be prepared and stuff. Also, this sign I just saw explains the green rocks I've been seeing. The green is formed from iron, not oxidizing, but chemically bonding with other green stuff. Thanks, Iron. You're so cool. Now I am making myself a little sandwich. Cucumber, spinach, Havarti cheese. You know what they say, when there's Havarti, it's a party. Another moment where I'm so, so happy I live in a minivan and I can just open my trunk and I have a seat and a sunshade and I can look out onto the view. I thought about enjoying a beer while I was there picnicking, but I still have to figure out where I'm gonna take a shower today and I'll just save that for later.
I'm across the street from Looking Glass Base Camp. It is a place you can rent cabins or tent camp in the backyard or do overnight parking. And I went in there yesterday to ask about showers and no, no one really looked like they were working. It was just a bunch of, it looked like just friends sitting around. So I don't know, but this is my plan A for finding a shower just because I think it'll be the cheapest and it's the most like, I don't know. They seem like my kind of people. Okay, so um i went inside they the owners weren't there but there was a sign on the door that said text us if you need something and i did i said hi how much would your showers cost and if you have to pay to stay how much would it cost to stay there i wait a half an hour nothing wait a few more minutes nothing then i text hey have you got my messages nothing and then at that point i was like okay i don't have all night so i went across the street there was a motel that rented cottages so i just walked up and i was like do you all happen to have a shower that's not connected to a building that i could use and um, the person working just gave me a key to a room to use that shower. And I was like, oh, thank goodness for the kind people out there. I feel amazing. The question now is what to do. I have two hours of daylight left. It's 10, it's 8.15 and the sun sets at like 9.40, so... It's going to be light for a while. Should I go ahead and drive an hour to West Glacier? Or I could chill here. I I think I'll move on, actually. Because one of the main reasons I want to be here is because I connected to the Wi-Fi across the street. And I'm like, uh, I don't know if that's really ethical. You know, I'm not a paying guest. I shouldn't be using their Wi-Fi. So, let's drive on. There's home for the night. I found it on iOverlander, which is an app that shows you free campsites and not free. Um, but I always want to make sure I'm staying someplace where camping is allowed. So this is where I found tonight. It is more outside of West Glacier than I would like. It's like a maybe a 10 minute drive or so, but oh well, it's home for the night. Cheers. Oh, this is what the end to every day should look like. Like my last Glacier video, I'm drinking Moose Drool Brown Ale. Disgusting name. Nice brown ale. At the beginning of the day before I started filming, I was in a slump. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I was feeling gross because I hadn't had a shower in a while and just unmotivated, didn't want to do anything. But I started hiking that trail by the lake and then I saw a bear and then I saw a waterfall and then I had a sandwich with a view and now I'm having a beer in this pretty campsite. Point of this story being that sometimes your day starts out kind of bad but wait a while and things may change and i'm saying that for myself to realize just as much as i'm saying it for any of you all that it might resonate with thank you so much for watching y'all have a good day bye i just realized another way to tell black bears from grizzly bears is this is a black bear here on the California flag for Lassen, Lassen Volcanic National Park that is a grizzly bear. You see the difference? Shoulder muscles, not really shoulder muscles, just kind of a big butt.